Hello and welcome to Honor Ended. My guest is Luke Brown, and Luke is known, as I introduced him now, as the man who blew the whistle, if you want, on Bill and Loan. But again, we will remember Luke from his last outing in the 2010 general elections. He ran for the ULP against the leader of the opposition, the Honorable Anna Eustis. Luke, welcome to the studios of IKTV once more. Yeah, thank you for having me here, Tony, today. I hope we have a, a very meaningful discussion on some of the issues that have been debated nationally over the past several weeks or so. Of course, I've been here before. On, yes. on this occasion, I come following a group of very distinguished Vincentians. Of course, not too long ago, you had Sir James Mitchell on Correct. the program, and then last week you had... Uh, Stephen Joachim and Chester Connell. So, I'm so we like to think all of our guests in this program are distinguished. <laughs> now, Luke, Indeed. you know, I introduced you as the man who blew the whistle on Bill and Loan. I mean, mm -hmm. that sounds dramatic. <laughs> Is that in fact what you did? No, well, I, I don't necessarily think of it in terms of blowing a whistle or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I think I discharged an important responsibility given what the developments at, building and, at the Building and Loan Association were. No, I mean, I want us to look at this in the, the context of the fact that people knew about problems at Building and Loan for mm -hmm. some time now. Uh, I made reference in my initial article that the IMF expressed its own concerns mm -hmm. in an Article 4 consultation report. We knew that the financial analysts and uh, accountants and so were discussing Building and Loan for some time. And, I mean, the question that you have to ask at the outset mm -hmm. is if it is in our best national interest for one segment of Vincentians to be able to discuss this thoroughly and to make investment decisions on the basis of those discussions and first exclude a different category of Vincentian from the discussion, individuals who may not be quite as financially literate as some of these men who would have ac had access to the reports and who could interpret financial statements properly. And I think that in the discussion that emerged after that initial building and loan article, uh, that point was made by several individuals, the need for us to, to bring this information to the public so that we could develop a greater awareness on financial issues generally. I'm going to, before I continue this issue mm. of building and loan, because it has been said, right, that one of your motives for writing what you wrote was personal. Personal because your father may have been involved in business and um, or was involved in, in the directorship of Building and Loan at one point. Am I, am I correct or incorrect? Uh, my father was a director of Building and Loan almost 10 years ago. I mean, right. That, that really has nothing to do with my decision to write. I mean, and I think anybody who objectively looks at the facts as they were presented in the public domain and as they have emerged since that initial article would be able to make their own conclusions on what some of the motives were. The, we can't get around the fact that there were some things that I think, some problems with the association that had to be addressed. I sought to make a small contribution towards addressing some of those problems. And I don't want us to look at building and loan in a very narrow sense because mm. what we're really dealing with here is a problem of financial institutions. And we could look at what unfolded in the United States a couple of years ago, for example, and draw lessons therefrom. They had the, the Lehman Brothers issue, Lehman Brothers collapse, and that was after the regulators in the States knew that there were problems with this financial institution, but they didn't have the political will or mm. other will to step in and to solve that problem. Instead, they allowed the institution to collapse, and that set off a chain of events that really led us to a global financial crisis from which we're still trying to recover. When we had the Clico Bico situation that, came, that was closer to home as well, there was a similar suggestion by the individuals involved in regulation that there was no authority to intervene to prevent a financial catastrophe. Mm -hmm. In the case of building and loan, however, we have a regulatory, regulatory system that had been developed that allowed an entity, in our case, the Financial Services Authority, to see that a problem had developed and to intervene to sort of help address some of the institutional deficiencies and then, of course, return it to shareholders' control. So we, we, we're looking at a problem that does not affect St. Vincent and the Grenadines in isolation. It is an international problem. There are some lessons that we could learn from the way in which things have proceeded before. And this problem really is perhaps a result of the evolution of mm. cooperations in general because we would not have had similar problems in the AHC 
where businesses were dominated by family-run enterprises. Where you have family-run enterprises, there's no separation between the ownership of the business and the control. There's no separation between the people who provide the capital and the people who use that capital. Mm -hmm. In our age, we have a diverse range of shareholders, thousands of shareholders, owning a corporation, providing capital for that corporation without really very clear-cut mechanisms by which they could exert control on the management let's, thereof. Let's focus on the article that you mm -hmm. wrote. and you, you, mm -hmm. you, you, you In the article, which, which I read, you were identifying areas of concern okay. and you know for the purpose of this program mm -hmm. let's rehash some of those because okay. clearly those are the areas among others that are being addressed by the FSA yeah. now mm -hmm. um, one of them you had identified was the spread of um, loans to interest paid on shares mm -hmm. um, I'm not talking about permanent shares there. I'm talking about the, the, the I don't know what you call them but um, and, and, and you said there was not a, you alluded to that, there was not a wide enough spread. I, yeah. well, I, I alluded to some problems with the business model that was mm. adopted generally, and I think that there have been some changes to the business model so that you have, that, that would have brought it into a more sustainable situation. Mm -hmm. that, and, and those changes would take into consideration the interest paid on shares as opposed to the interest rate received on mortgages. Now, quite apart from that discussion is the fact that there were a number of delinquent mortgages which had to be addressed. And one of the principal things I would say that was highlighted in the initial article that I wrote was the fact that the IMF expressed its concern about the very high level of delinquency that the association has experienced. There, there are just a few real issues that I raised in that article, and one of them had to do with the fact that there was no annual general meeting in 2012 and there was no public explanation right. for the reasons why there was no annual general so meeting. So did you feel then that, mm. that you know, the, the, the board, management and the board, knew the mess that they were in and basically trying to find something good to go to the shareholders with and mm. and in lieu of finding something to go to the shareholders with you just don't go at all well is that what was happening well they said that they had some technology problems mm. and, and they had problems with their IT system and that prevented them from um, preparing the financial reports and getting those reports audited and so on whether or not you should have problems with the IT system for such a long time is a matter for individuals mm. to decide. But quite apart from that, and uh, I could refer to what was said by the Financial Services Authority, there was a mechanism created for loan recovery through a company called RR Recovery Limited that the FSA said was dubious and non-transparent at best. Mm -hmm. You know, so and but but I could understand the reasons why there might have been an approach that was that kind of approach because when you when you transfer some of your non-performing loans to, mm -hmm. the to, to this entity, recovery, recovery. you're able to prepare, uh, enhance the, your own balance sheets and that could redound to your advantage whenever you were able to go to the shareholders eventually. So, I mean, these things were at play. Uh, I think that we need to learn the lessons as a result of this exercise. At the end of this program, you know, we would like the people who are um, involved in building a loan in, in, in mm. with, um, by means of being shareholders, mm. uh, having money mm. invested there, walk away with something to hold on to. Mm. Um, but not, notwithstanding that, let us identify, let us go through what the FSA must be going through now. Mm. From where you sit, I mean, what are the main things that the FSA would be dealing mm. with in order to recover the situation? Well, I think, first of all, the FSA might be focused, and I obviously can't speak on behalf of the Yes, FSA but what, what I mean, we're speculating. What, what do you think they should be dealing with? I think they should address the problem of the IT system. I think in our age, and when you're managing uh, assets of, on such a large scale, you have to have a properly functioning IT system. So if, in fact, things were wrong with that IT system, sort them out. I think the so the IT system screwed up problems mm -hmm. like what? Improper records? Improper record keeping yes. and so on, which, I mean, so, so we have to get the basis of our record keeping in order. So in other words, I could have had a loan mm -hmm. for $300,000 and it may be showing that I, I in fact had a loan, well, nobody knew what, the, what, what, what was paid and what well, was you? Is, well, it, is it as bad as that? 
I'm, I'm not sure that it's as bad as that, but what I know is that the situation as it stood prevents the, the, the regulators, according to their reports, from being able to adequately address the balance sheet position as it stands now. Mm. So you address that, and then, so after looking after the IT problems, I think the FSA then gets into the, the financial statements, preparing the financial statements, mm -hmm. and having those financial statements audited, and bringing those audited financial statements to the shareholders. Of course, sooner or later, they're going to have to look at the problem of getting a, an interim board in place, mm -hmm. and then the transition back over to the ownership of the shareholders is something that I think they'll be... Will the FSA be addressing the question of delinquency, and how and what steps would the mm -hmm. FSA be taking to make these non-performing loans performing? Well, I think they have already in some public way addressed some of the concerns related to delinquency. I think they're entering negotiations with individuals who might have problems where that is concerned. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot to do with efficiency. The, the way in which you manage a situation, individuals might run into some financial difficulties yes. and so on, but the institution has a responsibility at times to reach out to that individual. You see, I mean, I, I saw... I saw this rather humorous ad by a local businessman, I think, OT recently, which appealed to his customers who mm -hmm. may have run into financial problems to come in and to come talk to, to him and, 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 yeah. and, and see what yeah. could be done. You know, I don't know if there was this sort of outreach done yeah. in the interest of the, the institution and its long-run financial health. When we come back to the second segment, let's, let's look at the issue of regulations, period. Because, as you rightly said, so James was on this program not too long ago, and he felt that not only should the FSA be involved, but he felt the central bank should play more of a role mm -hmm. in governing and regulating these non-financial institutions. Okay, no problem. Okay. So let's, let's take a look at regulations when we come back. All right. This is Unrendered, and my guess is Luke Brown. More with him when we come back.